Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week four, video two. In this video, we will talk about using arrays with two loops and I wanna demonstrate another example of how you can do that. Uh, before I go any further, I need to explain that in health outcomes research, when working with administrative claims data or any other insurance data set, we are often interested in knowing how many months an individual is continuously eligible for. This continuous eligibility, that means that they did not drop out of enrollment in that insurance is actually very important because if an individual is enrolled in the health plan, then we get all of their claims data. We know all of their health uh, healthcare utilization information. If an individual is not enrolled in the health plan, then maybe they use a different insurance to go seek their healthcare services, or maybe they paid for their services with cash. Either way, we will not have information on them, so we don't want to include those individuals after they have stopped being continuously eligible. So continuous eligibility is one of those important things that we always look for when working with claims data. So let's use arrays and the same data set that we saw in the previous video to see how many months of continuous eligibility an individual has. The difference between this one and the previous video is in the previous video, we just wanted to know the total number of months they were eligible. In this video, we are talking about how many months they are continuously eligible for. So if there's a gap in eligibility at some point, then we need to stop counting the number of months that they have uh, as eligible, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and start writing this example. Um, call my data set eligible check. Um, I write my set statement. Hopefully by now you're all used to seeing this. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to define my array just like I did earlier. So this time I want to call my array ELIG. Um, there are seven variables in my array just like we did earlier. These are ELIG underscore two zero one seven underscore zero one to ELIG underscore one seven. And I'm telling SAS now that the array ELIG has seven variables, and these are the seven variables that are in there. If ever you write an array statement where the number in here does not match the number of variables you listed in the following statement, the following part of the statement, SAS will throw you an error. So make sure you know how many variables you're trying to enter. Uh, okay, now let us first set continuous eligibility for every individual to zero, right? We want to begin with there and we want to start incrementing it if we find that they are continuously eligible. There are a couple ways to do this and I'm going to write a do loop to show both ways to accomplish this, right? The first one is using the do loop with a counter variable just like we did earlier. So do i equals one to seven and end. Now, what is going to be different from last time in this do loop is that we are going to condition this do loop on, um, on a certain condition, right? We are going to say, keep running this do loop only as long as eligibility i equals one. What this does is that as soon as there is a month for which the, uh, the eligibility variable is zero, like here, right? The loop will stop running. And the way it will do that is because as i keeps incrementing, the counter variable keeps incrementing, for each time the counter variable is incremented, it will check this condition. It will check this condition where it will say, for that elige array, let's go pull the variable according to the counter. So for i equals one, let's pull the first variable in that array. For i equals two, let's pull the second variable in that array. And then it will check this condition. It will say, is that first variable equal to one? Is that second variable equal to one? So on and so forth. So when it finds that this condition is not met, the loop will stop executing. So once I've checked that, I can then write the same thing I wrote earlier. I can say if eligibility elig i equals one, then continuous elig equals And this should accomplish it. This is all I need to do, right? Right now, what this is doing is it will keep in adding the value one to the continuous eligibility variable, c-o-n-t underscore e-l-i-g but it will only do so for as long as this condition is met. And once this variable becomes zero, so for example, um, for patient number two, as the do loop starts executing, 
the first loop will refer to this variable the second loop will refer to this variable the third loop will refer to this variable and the sixth loop will get to this variable where there is a zero so the loop will stop executing and it will not add one to the previous value of continuous eligibility anymore let's look at it and see if this makes sense check my log log looks good and here you have it right so so for the first individual they were continuously eligible for all seven months in this in this data set right all seven months variables have a one in them so that is seven for the second individual they were eligible from june sorry from january through may june they have a zero july they have a one if you were to simply add those variables you would find that they are eligible for six months but they are continuously eligible for just five months right january through may so this one shows five because the loop stopped executing when it ran across the first zero uh, for this individual which is another interesting case here we'll see that the loop stops executing from january february and march and then once it hits april it finds a zero so the loop stops executing so the continuous eligibility variable stops at three and you can also see where the loop stops executing for each individual based on the value of i right here when the value of i hit four then the condition basically was checking for the value one in the fourth variable in this array and the fourth variable actually had a value of zero not one so the loop stopped executing right so you can do it this way another way to look for continuous eligibility using arrays um, i'm going to call this continuous eligibility two equals zero uh, instead of using the do while loop where the loop stop executing upon a condition we can actually use our own flag variable to tell SAS when to stop incrementing the value of continuous eligibility. So let me do this, do i equals one to seven. Uh, here I'm going to use uh, simple if then statements, but the logic will get a little complicated. So on top of my continuous eligibility variable, I'm going to add, I'm going to create another dummy flag variable. I'm going to call it um, disenroll underscore flag. And I'm going to set it to zero. This is a flag that will tell me if somebody is uh, disenrolled or if their enrollment has stopped for any given month. Uh, so I'm going to say if uh, here, if ELIGI equals one and disenroll underscore flag equals zero, then zero underscore two. I will explain how this works in just a second. If ELIGI equals zero, then disenroll flag equals one. Right, that's it, two lines of code. So what I'm doing here is I have set this dummy flag variable to be equal to zero. And as long as that flag variable stays zero, we can keep adding one to our continuous eligibility variable to identify how many months they're continuously eligible. So as the, as the do loop is going from one through seven, as usual, the array variable in here is getting incremented as well, right? So for each loop, we are looking at a different variable within that array. So for an i equals one, we are looking at the first variable in that array. We are seeing if it is one. And as long as our disenroll flag is set to zero, we will add one to the value of continuous eligibility. So we are adding one more month of eligibility for that individual. But once an individual is not enrolled in a given month, Let's say elige i equals zero for March for some one person in the data set. Well, when that is equal to zero, this statement is not triggered at all because this condition is not met. Instead, this condition is met. So this if then statement is triggered. And as soon as this is triggered, the disenroll flag actually gets bumped from a zero to a one. Right? So now we know that this individual was not eligible for the month of March. So next, when it goes to April and I gets incremented to four, it's going to come and check this if then statement. And let's say the individual was eligible in the month four, which is April, this condition will be met, but this flag variable will not be met because we bumped it from a zero to a one, right? So then the continuous eligibility will not get incremented by one anymore. Let me see if this works. We'll run it and we'll, we'll see if it gives the same value as COMT underscore village. And then we can talk about how it works one more time. There we go. So we now created 
besides the cont underscore elig variable we under we created a new variable cont elig2 and it has the same exact values as cont elig1 so it's two different ways to get to the same output and in this case when we were doing this we also used this flag variable uh, to basically tell us when to stop incrementing the cont underscore elig variable let's let me walk through another example of how this works using the second individual who actually disenrolled in june and enrolled back in july and we'll talk about how this works so the way the do loop works is that it basically says keep adding one to the variable cont underscore lh2 as long as there is one in each variable in the array right as long as there is one it keeps adding one to this variable just like we did in the earlier do loop the difference here is that before it adds one it will check to see if the flag variable we created is zero or not as long as that flag variable stays zero it will keep adding one to this variable which is what we want now this flag variable is triggered from a zero to a one as soon as it encounters one variable which has a zero in this in this in this array so for this in, uh, individual benny id number two we find that uh, the flag variable is zero when the first loop is run for january the flag variable is zero for the second loop is run for february and variable i equals and this variable equals one so continuous eligibility is one here it's two on the second loop it's three on the third loop because the flag variable is still zero and so on and so forth but once we hit the sixth loop right this variable equals zero so then the flag becomes set to one as you're seeing right here right so when it is set to one that particular loop does not increment the value of cont underscore lh2 cont lh2 is actually still five at this stage and then we move on to the seventh loop where i equals seven and the seventh variable actually they are enrolled in this in this month but because the disenroll flag equals one we do not increment the value of cont lh2 that's what this piece of code is doing so this is saying that before you increment the value of cont underscore lh2 by one make sure they are eligible for that particular month based on the based on which loop we are running and make sure that the disenroll flag is set to zero and the disenroll flag is set to one only if there is a month where they were not eligible earlier so using this combination of two if then statements and a flag which gets triggered to a one as soon as one month of lack of enrollment is found we are basically accomplishing the same thing as a do while loop so it's just a different way to do this either way you do it it's acceptable uh, it's not like one process takes longer than the other process it's just that uh, if you use this flag variable you are creating a new variable that takes up more space which may be a concern if you're using large data sets but really um, one variable with a zero or one value is not really going to take too much of space so i would not necessarily say that this is more processor intensive than this one either either process is acceptable whatever helps you think through it i think is acceptable is an acceptable way to do it as long as you get the right answer so in the next video we're going to come back and we're going to look at using arrays with do loops to do uh, even more impressive things if you will